Hey, Doombots. What's going on? Tony Scangilli here with No Per Dope, the series where we take a look at a character before they're released, kind of evaluate what they are, and give you a nope if uh, they're not really worth the money to work on right now, or dope if they're going to make a huge impact to your roster. Disclaimer, this is complete opinion. Uh, I'm not just talking about my roster, but everybody's. I'm going to try to give you as much detail about what this character does and where he's going to be useful and hopefully allow you as much information as you can to make your own decision. So we have Star-Lord T'Challa. He will be available soon after this video is released. How soon? Who knows? Uh, and what he does is he puts together the Ravager War Offense Team. Eh, war Offense with a little bit of War Defense on the side possibility, but they are a War Offense Team. Do not get that wrong. Now, what I'd like to do is show you a whole bunch of the character's kit and where everything goes. Uh, we're going to make the assumption that any character you would unlock would be immediately brought up to level 65, gear tier 12, 6664. Just to see how the character operates at that level and kind of look at the tier fours to see how much of a difference they make. So, really quickly, let's ignore this website and go to msf.gg, which has uh, the most accurate possible information we can get. Uh, thanks to Pimtoxy and Taije, link in the description below. I support these guys dramatically. So, start with Star Wars. Let's take a quick look at his abilities. So. Starting with the passive, we have uh, on turn, gain evade, clear one negative effect from self and all Ravager allies. Non-summoned enemy death, gain 30% speed bar, 30% uh, damage in war, Ravagers gain 30% damage, Ravager allies gain 25% max health. Uh, this goes to 50% max health uh, in war offense. So, right? And then uh, Ravager allies gain 25%. So, this is a big... Well, he and everyone. So it's a pretty big upgrade. You can see it right here. Like, war, they're okay. War defense, they're amazing. Good upgrade, makes the team good. No questions. Copy three pot. First of all, six energy, okay? In a war team. Six energy, okay. Copy three positive effects, including good ones from adjacent allies. Attack primary target for a ton of damage. Uh, increased duration of all positive effects, excluding regeneration for self and all Ravager allies by plus one to a maximum of three. Copy all with the tier four or whatever. Sure, this is a, a pretty good nuke. You know, 530 with the tier four. Copy all positive effects from adjacent allies. Makes placement of this team a little bit relevant. Uh, being six energy uh, clear, clearly shows that this team thrives, right? Thrives in war uh, and... You get this attack off. This job, this attack's job is to take out a threat, you know, while setting up for future teams to clear off. Uh, moving to Gravity Repulsor, attack primary target for 320 damage, goes up to 400. Apply blind, apply defense, blah, 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 blah. If primary target has blind, see up to one energy. With the tier four, it goes to two. This is the another six energy ability. Now, the cool thing is you're going to want to choose targets that have blind so that you can steal energy and make these six energy attacks not that terrible. Think like Ultron's ultimate, where he gains an energy for each buff he has. If he has no buffs, the attack is completely terrible. If the if you have to use these abilities and there's not a blind up, it's not going to do a lot. You know, it's not going to steal the energy. It's actually going to waste the time. So you probably want to save this attack for there. Uh, but since how the team works and is are moving blinds around and, and how the, everything's going to function for everybody, it makes sense that you're going to lead off with Ravager Rocket and follow up with Gravity Repulsor. Last, we have the passive. Slight increase in damage. Always gain offense up. Cool. So, this is T'Challa's kit. And I've been hearing a lot of conversation about T'Challa being, like, a great option for tech. Um, please don't. Please don't purchase or work so hard on T'Challa because you believe that he's going to solve Doom tech nodes. I can assure you that if you do, you will be very sad with how you spent your tech gear when the actual tech raid team comes out. 
if you want to invest in T'Challa for war and get some value out of him outside of it, I don't think he's phenomenal in Doom Tech, but I don't think he's the worst option. Like He's not Iron Man. So I, I think you can get some value, but I don't think what he's designed for. Uh, I don't think he's as good as like Lady Deathstrike, and she's clearly not designed for those raids. She just helps you beat specific nodes. So if you need to get it done today, he's not the worst option, but don't look at him as if he is the solution. He also has no impact at all, at all, on any other game mode. Uh, he's not really relevant in raids. He has too much energy and there's too many things all over the place. Maybe some cute value in Dark Dimension, but again, you have to build specifically around it or use two Star Lords, and he's not legendary, so that's not going to happen in harder ones. I don't see from his kit much going on here, but let's take a quick look at his stats. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll register his stats at a moderately reasonable investment. Now, I don't think anybody's going to have this uh, particularly quickly. Let's give him Striker for the sake of it. Let's give him three green. And let's put all the tier fours. Let's get him to gear tier 14. Again, I don't think everybody's going to get these characters this high. But this is a good place. Because if he's good here, at least it has something to work on. If he's not good here, if it's not logical to invest in him at this point, at about 90k, then you're already talking about a level of investment in this character that far surpasses what most players would be capable of doing and that you could probably do on characters that currently exist to get the most value out of. So at 90k, roughly, you know, he's got gear tier 14, he's got less than 200,000 health, obviously that number is boosted in war. Decent damage, all things considered, 26,000 from a combination of this and his stats uh, with the right tier 4s and everything. Focus and armor is nothing to be noted about. Speed is pretty good. 125 is not is not nothing. So he'll be going fast. A uh, particularly large point of the time. But he's not such a stat king, right? That you're going to be able to turn a 200k base character. And again, we can, we can go a little bit further here. You know, we can bring him to level 80. See how that works out. We can, we can get him to gear tier 15. See how that works out. He gets a little bit more health, but still not even as much health as Shuri has. His damage goes through the roof, which is phenomenal for damage-dealing character. But his kit itself doesn't solve any equations. So, as far as whether I'm interested in T'Challa, that answer comes exclusively down to whether or not I need another incredibly viable war offense team and the answer is of course i do it's war you always need another viable war offense team um so that's his value completely if you try to find additional splash value out of t'challa it's not going to be the best day for you you're not going to have a great time with it he can get more value but he is a war character not to say he's dragging around four other characters two tech a bio and a mystic character that are also going to need some decent investment that I know for a fact nobody had because there was no reason to really invest in the Ravagers, you know, aside from unlocking Star Lord early on or maybe getting some value out of the previous version of Gamma, those characters aren't getting much use. So the truth is, in the conversation of Nope or Dope, the only way he's dope is if you want that extra war team. Other than that, he's not really worth the time, the money, or the effort to get him today. Now I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room, and I'm going to say it even though I don't believe in it. If you fear that any character might be necessary for a legendary unlock, and that is why you're buying them, you are probably wasting more money on the characters that you buy than you otherwise would. The FOMO, if you think about how many characters you've purchased that haven't unlocked the Legendary, it's going to total way more than the amount of money you saved on the ones that did. That said, I don't think T'Challa is a bad character. I think he gives viability and use to a whole bunch of other characters in the game. I probably would buy him 
Uh, I won't. He's a Blitz character, and I have no problem unlocking Blitz characters. Again, I also don't really need to worry too much about how strong he is. I plan on using this as a war offense team, and generally speaking, war offense teams kind of are kit-based, and they have a, a, a lane that they have to be in. So, like Shadowlands, you know, if you invest in the Shadowlands team, they need X, Y, and Z in order to be able to defeat this team, and then the punch-up power is completely dependent on where you are in the game. So I, I gotta say nope on T'Challa for most of the players in the game because most of the players in the game aren't clamoring for a new war offense team. As a matter of fact, most of the players in the claim are just clamoring for Omega Red to come back uh, to finish that war offense team and have Omega Red. So uh, if you are looking for something to do with some uh, about four otherwise not amazing characters uh this is a good investment but i gotta say right now unless more information comes out about his usability or where something you need him for uh, unless you care about war this has got to be a nope from me so that's my official rating on t'challa um if you uh, are buying him that's awesome i don't hold anything against you he is a war character so you are buying him for war I don't think you should ever expect to get more out of him than that. And if that's all you expect, then power to you, man. Like, that's great for you. But let's not spend money on characters because they're going to solve problems that they very clearly are not going to solve. Anyway, that's it. Have a good night. Have a great day. Uh, I've been Tony Scajili, and I will catch you later.